What's up my friends? So my name is Cinder. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about fitness and men's style. So today we have something a little different. I will be taking you through today's leg workout so that I won't bore you guys out by just watching me do my leg workout. I have seven sets of squats and in between every set I'm going to try to give you a tip. So just a disclaimer, I'm not a personal trainer. I'm just your friendly neighborhood meathead. This is just one training day out of an entire training cycle that is custom tailored program for me. So unless you're Cinder, don't do this workout. So stick around for the tips that I will be giving in this video. So yeah, there's this stigma about the dreaded leg day. And yeah, I get it, leg workouts do suck. They leave your legs super sore and sometimes it's debilitating. You can't even walk the next day. And I don't like that either. I like to walk and I like wearing jeans. So for the most part, I just do my squats and deadlifts and then call it a day. So just a little information, I have been lifting seriously for around 3 years now. I'm not the strongest, I know, but among all the lifts, I think the squat would be my best, especially at the moment. So I am currently under the coaching of Kalinga Barbell on Instagram. Hit him up, hit up my coach if you want custom programming for yourselves, especially in the realm of powerlifting. So yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna start to warm up now. So I'm down to my last warm-up or maybe last few warm-ups. Currently have 187.5 kilos loaded on the bar for my last warm-up. So the program today calls for nine. Oh wait, sorry. Program today calls for seven singles at RPE nine. So yeah, it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> so you guys should probably know that this isn't actually how my typical leg workouts would look like. I'd probably do more. Today, I'm only doing three exercises, three heavy exercises, because we're scheduled to do a mock meet next week. So this is kind of like a taper, if you would call it like that. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term, you're trying to cut down the number of reps, the number of sets that you're doing so that you can get yourself uh, in big condition to hit really big weights for only a single rep. On a regular day, I do giant sets because that's what my coach has me doing. So in between every heavy movement, I'd have some smaller bodyweight movements because that's the best way, I guess, we found to utilize the home gym since I only have barbells. I don't really have dumbbells or anything else. So yeah, keep watching. Okay, so my number one tip, especially if you're just getting started, is to brace. Brace your core. So, uh, if you're starting out, a lot, a lot of your efforts should be focused on getting and establishing a proper brace. So, if you guys know Pug or Ricky Cho, one of the strongest 74 kilo lifters, he talks about this a lot, especially on his TikToks, where most, most of your efforts should be really uh, getting down into a solid brace. So, master your bracing because getting a good brace ensures a stable squat, ensures a very stiff and rigid torso, so that nothing is going to give out as you're going down or even when you're going up. So a good brace doesn't only happen in the stomach, but all around, so that's why we use a belt, so that you can push your air, get a really, really big gasp of air and push it out against your stomach and the wall of your entire abdomen and then that tension is gonna climb up to your entire torso making your shoulder girdle also tight making everything tight your back and that force is gonna be the one lifting the bar out of the rack
Second set, it wasn't as, that was slow. <laughs> I didn't like that one. So again, on bracing, a common mistake I would see people is that they would puff their chest up so high when they squat. Uh, that also goes along with uh, sticking your butt back too far. So this usually comes with what the internet calls as the Instagram squat. They have their chest puffed up all like that and their back like that. So you can almost see the arc in their back as they squat down. This is not only unsafe, it's also inefficient because uh, like I said, you want to create a stable brace. So a good cue for that is to keep your ribs down. So if you guys have ever heard of the soda can analogy, you want to create something like a soda can out of your uh, rib cage, pelvis relationship. Well, I don't know how to call it, <laughs> but you should stack your body like a soda can so that it can get uh, all that force from the bar. So puffing out your chest like this and sticking your butt back so far, it's going to disrupt that line. So you cannot really get a good brace anymore when you do that. So keep your ribs down, your butt, keep it neutral. Don't stick it out too far back or stick it out too far, too forward when you go out of the squat. So let's talk about bar path. So bar path is the path that the barbell will take it, with respect to the horizontal, so it's the side view. If you want to lift some big weights, simple physics would let us know that the shortest distance traveled from point A to point B would be straight line. So in that sense, you want your bar path to be straight. So if you remember your physics class, work is force times displacement. And you want to make the most out of your work. So any deviation from that straight line would mean more work for you. So a straight bar path is an efficient bar path. So on the topic of bar path, it's extremely, extremely helpful to take videos of your workouts. So if you see guys on Instagram that post their videos a lot, a lot of times the purpose of the video would be a form of self-coaching. So you want to keep your reps consistent and make sure that there is consistency with your, with your depth, how wide you're standing, how wide you're gripping the bar. You want to keep your reps exactly the same. So take a few angles, take a front view to make sure that the bar is actually level with respect to the floor, it's not crooked on one shoulder. Uh, you also check if your knees are caving in a crazy amount when you hit the bottom. Take side angles to, again, like I said, check your bar path. Is your bar going straight from top to bottom and bottom to top? Are you actually hitting depth? Those are the kinds of things that you get to see if you take videos. So some helpful apps that I would recommend that I have been using for quite a while now to track my bar path would be BarSense and WL Analysis. So it's gonna upload your video. It's going to ask you where the plate is in the video. Once you select where the plate is in the video, it's going to draw a line following where the bar actually moves. So it's a very, very helpful tool. You will know what part of the squat or any movement for that matter you are getting wrong. So in that regard, I'm going to take a side video for you all so you can see. Since the last video was about taking videos and we're in the topic of basically keeping a log, uh, this tip would be about tracking your workouts. So this is an overall tip, not just for leg days or squats, but how do we actually know that progressive overload is taking place? So we track our workouts. So just like everything in finance, in nutrition, people always say that uh, so that you know where uh, things are going wrong, you know where you can improve, or you know where you should improve, you should track what is actually taking place. So I've been logging my workout since around 2017 and I'm actually quite pissed off about that because uh, I recently switched my phone and in the process of moving my files from one phone to the other, I accidentally deleted my workout log. So years of data, <laughs> years of data was lost. So 
bummer but uh, I'm not gonna stop tracking so I'm tracking every set, every rep that I take. Uh, on that note, at least I have most of my videos even all the way back 2017. The best part here is you can actually you can actually tell from the data how long it took you to get to a two plate squat, three plate squat, four plate squat, whatever your goals are. You know how how long the process took, and you can look back on the journey. So then your progress isn't only dictated by the actual girth of your quads. You know what I'm saying? It's dictated by the numbers, the numbers that you have been logging over the years, over the months. You can also see how well your form has been improving over time. So maybe you didn't really get new weights on the bar, but you did it with better form. So that's a win. That's a really good win over the long term. So none of this would have taken place if in the first place you never tracked your workout. So I have been using Fit Notes for the longest time available in the app store i like it because it's simple there are so many other uh exercise trackers and whatnot i just like fit notes because it has everything that i need in an app for the moment yeah i didn't like that rep i kind of got pitched forward so i had to muscle it up <laughs> bad bad so don't do that so next step would be the shoes, you guys. Wear the right shoes. Flat, heeled shoe, it's up to you. Most important is wear a stiff sole shoe. Nothing that has any soft cushiony sole like a running shoe or a basketball shoe. A stiff shoe wouldn't give so that when the moment you unwrap, the, the bar won't be bouncing on your soles. And uh, if you ever tried squatting in rubber shoes, you don't feel it, but when you watch the video, you can actually see your, your feet bouncing around all over so not safe not good not efficient um, in terms of heel shoe again it's gonna decrease the demand that your ankle has to bend over forwards you don't have to bend your ankle so forward just to hit depth so in other words a heel shoe in theory is going to help you hit depth so if that's your thing then go for it important thing is wear the right shoe light 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 post deadlifts and some uh, snatch grip Romanian deadlifts finish of the day those are gonna be easy so I'm just gonna skim through those videos as I speak so last tip if your squats are your weak point then look at your program uh, biggest tip would be to try to increase your frequency simply stated the only way to get better at squatting is to squat you cannot leg press your weight to a big squat and in my personal opinion squats are an absolute absolute essential in every program yes i said it yes i meant it so i'm confident to say that a lot of the mass that i gained throughout the years is because of squatting and uh, i got my squat to decent levels even right off the bat when i started off strength training and that is when I saw the best gains in my physique as well. And I'm talking about the entire body, not just my legs. So if your squats are lagging, try to squat more. If you only squat once a week, I highly recommend to squat at least twice a week. Currently, I'm squatting twice a week. The second squat day being a light squat accessory. So I do post squats on the second squat day. If you are looking for a program to start your strength training journey, I highly recommend an LP, a linear program, linear periodization, whatever, like strong lifts and starting strength and that stuff because that program gets you squatting three times per week and it's insanely hard. Well, it, it starts easy, it's going to get insanely hard, but it's very rewarding and you will have insane gains. Well, at least most people that I know had insane gains running those kind of programs. So it's starting to get dark. Let me finish off the program or I mean the workout before it gets really dark. These are a few tips. I try to make sure as much as possible that they are actionable. So it's something that you can apply right away with uh, the current situation that you're going through. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you liked it. 
I will make more of these if you did. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Peace.